Good to see you again, everybody. I'm Phil, and this is the Minuteman Moment. This is our third episode in our series of Gun Owners of America's explosive report on what we were able to force the ATF to reveal about its gun registry. In this episode, we're taking an ax to the root of this registry, why it even exists. The argument anti-gun activists use to argue for a gun registry is that we need a way to trace guns recovered in crime scenes. No doubt, with the massive crime wave over the last few years, they're not allowing that crisis to go to waste and are using the carnage to justify keeping and expanding the gun registry. But the biggest problem with this argument is the gun registry is useless at stopping crime. In fact, it's so useless, the ATF won't claim that its tracing center solved any crimes. So Congressman Michael Cloud and 51 other members of Congress asked a very straightforward question. How many firearm traces using these records were essential to the successful prosecution of a violent criminal in the last three years. In the case of each successful prosecution of a violent criminal, in what year was the essential firearm transfer record completed? And to that, the ATF responded by saying that their National Tracing Center has no ability to determine the successful prosecution of hundreds of thousands of crime gun traces it completes annually. Nor does it have any way to link or trace a specific prosecution for a particular year. That actually makes the whole thing sound pretty useless. But according to the DC establishment logic, a failure in the government never means a failure in the institutions. It just means they need more taxpayer funded dollars. That's why one of the princes of the swamp, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, has made calls for doubling the ATF's funding. In the real world, when something is useless, we just get rid of it. But in DC, we just reward failure by throwing money at it until something happens. Or more likely than not, nothing happens. We also know that gun registries are useless at stopping crime because law enforcement officials have basically admitted it. During Dick Heller's second major fight to restore his rights from infringement by the District of Columbia, where I am now, it was revealed that the police aren't using the registration records to solve crimes. Lieutenant Shelton could not recall any specific instances where registration records were used to determine who committed a crime, except for possession offenses. Similar to that instance, a registry maintained by the government of Honolulu, Hawaii, also failed to help solve even a single crime. And according to Honolulu Police Chief Lee Donahue, during a state Senate committee, he could not point to any crimes that have been solved by registration, and he even estimated that his officers spent, get this, 50,000 hours each year on registering guns. So not only do these gun registries do little to nothing to prevent or solve crimes, but they also take up law enforcement resources which could have been used to actually stop crimes that are happening in our communities. In fact, GOA's FOIA shows that the ATF has 335 employees dedicated to searching records. Working full-time jobs, they spend nearly 700,000 hours a year, or 13,000 hours a week, searching a gun registry instead of doing other things. Now, you might say there is one place in the world where there is an effective gun registry, and that's North Korea. They have a grand total of zero privately owned firearms, and if you ask the dictator Kim Jong-un, they have zero crimes. They also have zero freedoms. But why is it that these registries don't stop crime? Just think about it like this. Knowing where, when, and who bought a gun that was used in a crime doesn't prevent a crime that just happened. And consider the situation in which an officer acquires a gun at a crime scene. Officers typically recover firearms at crime scenes only because the suspect either died or was incapacitated. How many times does a criminal kill someone with a gun and just leave it around? Not enough to justify a gun owner registry. And frankly, if they did it just once, even that's not enough for a gun registry. Plus, if a criminal is going to murder someone, they probably aren't afraid to commit a second felony and just remove the serial number from their gun, making it totally untraceable. In GOA's report, we also discuss how having a national gun owner registry is a national security risk in its own way. If one of America's foreign enemies, like China, let's say, were to gain access to the data in this registry, they know which Americans are armed. Now, I don't know about you, but I can think of a hundred different reasons why I wouldn't want a foreign country, just as much as my own country, knowing who has the guns and where they live. Let's also say that some human rights activist who decided to keep herself armed for her own personal protection 
wants to speak out against a particular regime which gained access to the National Gun Registry. Nothing is preventing that regime from blackmailing that activist by threatening to expose their address, social security number, or how many guns she owns. The mere existence of this registry ensures this risk is ever present. And what's worse, ATF has not answered basic security questions about the registry, like have any ATF employees ever been fired, convicted, or suspected of misusing the database? Does ATF have any system in place to monitor, catalog, audit, or otherwise analyze the access of the records contained within its registry? What security measures would stop a third party from utilizing accounts with access to the database, either by consent or through coercion of an ATF employee? Who has physical access to the records or servers on which these records are stored at all steps of the processing. We'll try to push for the ATF to answer these questions, but Gun Owners of America is still focused on the big picture, ending the registry. We aren't gonna waste our time or yours by asking the ATF to make some minor changes here and there. We are calling for the total abolishment of this gun owner registry. It serves no purpose other than to oppress American citizens. The pros and cons of this registry are clear. The benefit is we rarely get to solve any crimes, and the cost is that the government knows exactly who has the guns and how they can confiscate them when they want to become an authoritarian state. This fight's not gonna be easy, especially since President Biden's new rule is seeking to expand the registry even more. We'll explain how this rule will make this oppressive registry even stronger and more dangerous to all Americans, especially gun owners. Make sure you subscribe so you're able to catch the next episode and spread the word about this report by sharing the video and the breaking news story about GOA's report on the registry. That's it for today. I'll see you next time.